that it's not the gear they're they're used to using, but I'm gonna be honest with you. We've seen some of these players put on a good let's show, go, and let's see them do it again. Courage. Game number two. Game two. The final day for qualifiers, trying to get in on a Monday, one and a half million dollars, and Jack, where are they dropping? Where are we dropping? Well, we're following Tenpa. We have to off that performance in game one. Looks like he's headed right back towards Snobby, and that's where he landed last game and had the perfect zone. So he's like, hey, let's hopefully have it work out that way again. So he'll go ahead and fly towards that area. And when you're flying on in, spinning around, looking for exactly where other opponents could be dropping on in from. Looks like he'll have someone there on his screen. Can't quite read the name. Uh, but either way, some early engagements possibly for Tenpo here. Unlucky blue location came around uh, with just some ammunition. You see a lot of these players, it, it, even while traveling, they're going to smack every single, uh, any material source they can because it, early game fights, courage, one or two builds can make the difference between uh, uh, winning a 1v1 or not. And look, slaying inside the house, come, came up with a chug jug. He's got a blue AR already, and Tempo sitting on a, a, a great tactical shotgun at this range is not going to be nearly effective. Shotguns, you got to be very up close. That's why he's using the build. Trying to get in. It gets a shot through the no. window. Are you kidding me? No. 80 damage. Leaves slaying at 20. This chug jug could come in big if, if Tempo lets him get it off. You got Tempo no lets him Tempo use does. it. But Tempo's Tempo. got to push. Remember, he's only got 30. He, he's been tagged twice already. But this AR does 33 damage. So Tempo still has 34 health, meaning slaying is to hit two bullets. While he's only got 20 HP, Tempo has a shotgun. The top right corner, you can see oh just how close these two players are third partying. Uh, Tem uh, Tempo third. got a shield off. Tempo got two shields. Is he max shields now? And he's popping a chug jar. Are these guys both about to have 200 HP? It's full reset. Slang only has four Look builds. Tempo's banded. So Tempo's going to be at 175 if Slang lets him get the entirety of the bandages off, which he's going to. Slang's at 200. Tempo heard that? I can't tell he if Tempo have. heard that. The trap placement. Hopefully Tempo heard that and does not push through the window. He's only got eight bullets. Forget everything else, he's only got eight bullets. He's got to hope against us a limb right There's here. He's tempo. out of ammo. He's out of ammo. He's dancing around. He's got he at least a great, great pistol. pistol. That's it. That's he's his last one. Great pistol. He's got to push. And Tempo gets the elimination. And you see, no. Can't believe it. Somehow, in the like, two rooms these guys loot, they each get max shields and a chug jug. Here's Nick Merckx early on. Facing off against Ryan Rex. The dual pistols. OK, Nick, earning an early limb. One of the first of the game. At that point, there were only 90. There were 97. So that was uh, 98th place. 84 left right now, though. Two minutes and 14 seconds until the circle moves. This is kind of a uh, northeast, a centralized northeast main circle, which means a lot of players, regardless of where they dropped, maybe only flush factory at this point, or uh, or even lucky landing potentially because of the uh, the path these players are going to have to take uh, should be concerned. Everybody Let's else can kind of take their time and build up some uh, some materials as they move. And uh, Nick is totally fine inside uh, Tilted. He's going to go through here. He, players will always smack out all the furniture inside. It's not worth a lot of resources, Jack, but Every little you knock counts. them down pretty quick, and there's a lot of them. Early game when you can only build 10 walls, getting enough mats to maybe build two more, that's 20%. And you can wind up earning yourself. Oh, big fall there guard. from Jumpman. Sakairos now has the high ground. He actually falls and trying to hit a shot. Shotgun shot doesn't connect yet, and he's out of materials. Jumpman, Jumpman. trying to get the little peak over the top there. You saw him jump yeah. to try and take a shot. Back now, hiding in his own box. He does have five bandages, maybe an opportunity to heal up, but Sakairos is, is, he has to apply pressure, which he is. And Sakairos goes down to Jumpman, very accurate. You saw multiple crits in there and the shield disappearing. Sakairos only 28 HP. He, had 28 he, didn't health. Take, he didn't take a single point of damage. That's one that you want back. If you're Sakairos now, Kayun, one player above, one player nearby. It seems like everyone that landed risky is now getting in their fights. This big shield could make all the difference. There you go, wants a third party, this engagement. Shotgun shots coming on in, can only build two walls. That's Jota Jota just above. That was a perfect spray, yeah, knocks him all the way down. Brilliantly done by Kayun. Kayun earns that elimination. I, knowing the exact location where your opponent stopped up top, maybe potentially built uh, based on the walls that were still being built yep. mid-engagement, he says, you must be behind this ramp. Here's Cryo at Junk Junction. Big, Big shot damage. takes Trout to fly out. Point blank tack hits like a bus. And the rate of fire is high enough that you can unload rounds, unload shotgun shells, and deal a lot of damage very quickly. So it's kind of known by a lot of people. Chap likes to go to uh, Wailing Woods. And he's already got 700 wood. He's pushed towards Risky. He's got one of them to this point. Looking to pick up a second quickly underneath him. Yep. 
pops up he the side there. He hears the double barrel. Now that it's been shot once, I think this is Chap's green light to go for this. Trying to stop him from getting the reload off. Chap continuing to spray on down. Drum gun in hand, so darn good for shredding these walls. But he doesn't have a ton of ammo. Does take a pretty healthy hit right there. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, even picking up his second elimination. Well, you heard the reaction from everybody here. The double barrel when you are that close, and it does that pure like 160 damage. Yeah, that's why it's 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 now the new meta of shotguns to use in competitive Fortnite. You saw right there that that golden double barrel, even at kind of moderate range for a, a shotgun like that, the spread is very high and the damage drop off uh, happens quickly. Yep. Over 100 damage while jumping over the top of his opponent, a quick two shot. And this is Tifu out in the, uh, the little uh, Wild West, the set of Pueblos out here. He's looking, trying to hunt down a player underneath him. Compact SMG, a shotgun, uh, an AR, and a hunting rifle. Stalking his opponent now. He has tons of materials at this point. Uh, we've seen players start to favor this drop out here because the uh, the the larger rocks courage come away with. Wow, what a what a shot! Yep, Tifu picks up his second elim. Those large rocks, like I was saying, they they have 50 plus brick in them, and they only take a number of uh, a few melee hits. He was blind from cloud nine. One elim to this point. Again, you see immediately how these players just begin to break down structures when they realize they have so little materials. Whoa. All back to the big marks, looking for a, a, oh, anything. You get a 9 and a 20 off there. The 50 damage just pushes up on line mission, gets to the bottom of the staircase there. Nick's got three. Nick's that got three on That's a Nick. point for Nick Merckx, putting him on the board as well. And it looks like he wants to go for more. He's not, he's not done yet. Airco, a player we've seen a number of times in the past. It looks like Nick Marks might be getting third party multiple players here in Tilted as he's trying to back out of this engagement, saying it, the position I'm in right now, he's getting shot from above. Uh, it's not good enough to, uh, to to go for an engagement that he is already, somebody already has the top down on him. You see in the feed, Tyler's getting uh, double flower out. Here to Derp going down to a 189 meter rifle shot, but Nick found a chug jug. Nick's like, sure, I'll take that. That sounds good to me, my friend. And, and Nick is one of the best players at navigating Tilted, right? Knowing the ins and outs, the little escape routes you can have right there, just sneaks away in towards this new building. Uses that chug jug to get the max HP. This is Crunch, who we highlighted a little bit back in, in game one with his quick edits and his fast building. And right there, shows off the edit power, gets that a limp. Kevin Crunch, both uh, west side of Loot Lake, but they're not alone here. Uh, Tempo, a little ways away between Tilted and their current location at these uh, factories on the west side of Tilted. We might see a third party from him if he hears the engagement. They are in the, the, they're close to the edge of the zone though. Courage, they have a minute and 44 seconds before they have to move, but uh, just so people are aware, there are still two players outside of the zone coming from Pleasant Park and Shifty Shaft, so we might see some uh, some some drops to the, the storm in the feed here. But Kevin Crunch looking for each other. Well, C9 Blind, Salty Springs. Locks himself in, he's listening, and the, the turbo build's gonna protect the wall. He just has to hold down left mouse click while his opponent's trying to smack it out. He still owns it, so he can edit his way out, and he's gonna, he's gonna use that to his advantage. It, a lot of the structure, I believe, is still his, so he can edit these, but his, his opponent, like we've seen a number of times, they're gonna smack him out, they're gonna you, you use a pickaxe, replace it, so they take control of the wall, they decide when the hole is open. Should be a cleanup. You think 162. that? 162. Okay. Well, now that he knows that this player's got under 40 HP, he just wants us, and that's what you talk about with him owning a lot of these walls. He can edit through, edit through. Here's another engagement. Can he clean up the limb? There it is. That was uh, NRG Kaysen, who gets cut down. Blind's got to feel good about that, yep. especially after uh, last round. I love seeing these players uh, improve on their own gameplay, but. Uh, Double of Flowers stuck inside the house, already super low HP, walks in on Flowers, trying to trying to use Turbo Build to keep his opponent out, but it wasn't fast enough, and he had already been through the wall location, gets a shot off, a, a very easy elimination, just because of the low HP of Flower already. You'll see, whenever anyone's in this scenario, 
they never sit still. Even right now, Pupper, yeah, he'd, he'd love to just sit still and kind of take his hands off the keyboard, but you never know if there's a sniper aiming in at you, always strafing, always making sure he's not an easy target. We'll take a couple pop shots, and you hear that? You Speaking literally the snipers, hear that? The reason he's Whoever just shot that sniper, thank you for making my point. Giving credibility to Courage just uh, just by a, a single sniper shot. When you're playing in these, in these games, even at home, in any match, you always have to think with the mindset that there's a sniper watching me. Even if there's not, always think that there could be. Because again, those third-party opportunities, someone's hunting, someone's watching at all times. Colton, our, the winner from our first heat, goes down to Jumpman's tack shotgun. Uh, uh, my apologies, double barrel up close there, and Jumpman's going to top off. Very edge of retail, very edge three of the, the, the safe zone. Yeah, three eliminations. That's a point. He doesn't have to move very far. Uh, 47th Architect. You think he's in a great spot here, but he is quite low on AR ammo. And the zone's moving. Yep. He has to decide whether it's time to engage, which it looks like his opponent says it is, and Frankie gets the ELM. Uh, his 47th trying to move out. And that's actually Frankie's third elimination. That's a single point for him, which already yep. puts him in a, a fantastic spot. His loadout is actually exceptional right now, too. Two full shields. He had a bolt action. But he he's had got so gun, little HP in the AR. zone. That's the thing. He's got to move. He still has a minute. The zone still has a minute to push. So he's got to run so, so far. There's people nearby. Nick's got someone just above him. I think he'll break down wheels here any second. This could be another elimination for Nick Mertz, which would put him at four. And he still has a campfire to use, so even though he's in the zone, he's still in an okay position. Trying to match the building of wheels. They're on the same level now. Nick trying to swap to that shotgun. There's the a elimination. Shot on wheels. Nick Merckx hasn't been stopped yet, folks. He's got to make it, too. He's in a great spot to keep on moving with the zone. He, he's real, Actually, looking at the, the map, he's relatively far out. He has quite a ways to go. He has cut, still all the way across Dusty. Hopefully, there's more than one make it there, or maybe he has a launch pad, because otherwise, uh, he's, he's in a tough spot. Yeah, he most certainly is. Pupper. Now, remember, when this zone closes, it's going to start hitting even harder. For, is this the second? Is this the second? Yeah. Players now trying to medkit to stay alive here. Pupper getting chunked on down. He's got to stop and use this medkit. It's hitting for this two. Cutoff. This means it's a 1v1 fight. He doesn't have any eliminations left. So no matter, no matter the outcome, yep. no points Both for Pupper. Both of them there. drop. goes down as well. You see all their loot sliding down the ramp. The storm is quite good at getting eliminations, and you see it there over towards Hysteria. Just took down Yo-Yo. Keep it up. That's his first elimination of the game. Now, this is actually Hysteria's uh, third time through the qualifiers. He played through all the heats before this and uh, has done very well in those, but each qualifier, has, uh, he's gotten very close. I, I, I remember overhearing he got to 11th place uh, multiple matches, I believe, yesterday, yep. which is just one, one spot short of uh, getting even just a single point, which could have put him in uh, on Monday. This is where the little, little huts begin to get built, the one-by-ones, the little bases to hide on in. Over to Christo. Above Lonely Lodge won't be safe for this next zone, but he's playing like this because he's got WBG Ranger just below. Ranger tries to spray on down. The trap wow. comes in. There's 150, and oh no, Christo. A little bit of a panic there. It looked like, I don't know if you noticed, it, was he attempting the rift to go his way out of there just the last second of the trap damage? Possibly, as now Kayun thinks he's got a free limb opportunity in a third party. What he doesn't know is that that player below took zero damage, so they're both around the same amount of HP. And as a player, Lupo, you can sometimes use that to your advantage. Play mind games to your opponent. Oh, he thinks I'm weak because I just got this engagement. Meanwhile, he's still more than ready to fight again. Remember, too, if that trap is still in there, an opportunity for a lot of damage. A lot of AR ammo being used to keep an eye on the amount that Kayun has. Just about one, one and a half clips left. I believe if Ranger makes it to Monday, that's the fourth player for uh, WBG that would make it through, which is incredible. It's an excellent roster. Nick Merckx in the feed takes C9 blind out. Jeez, Nick Merckx is a man on a mission. Five Elims, that's two points already. That might already, that might lock Merckx in for, for Monday. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, Nick's in a brilliant position because he had a limbs last game, too. Here's Fade in a little build battle around one of these houses. Stops Joshua right there. Once he gets the high ground, he just goes for the quick shotgun shot. That heavy, so darn good when you get the headshot crit. And this is from Ranger's perspective. Drops him down, places the trap, edits the wall above him, swaps to the shotgun. It, it happens so quick, but 
every single one of those actions was calculated a much deserved a limb right there is he gonna go for this is he gonna go for this oh he gets almost one, of, one of the most aggressive launch pads we've seen so far he's trying to get the drop in on him up top it, it, the reason he, he went for it or potentially went for it is because the, the opponent at the top of the tower he's was got six he was in a he was already in an engagement so he, he kind of had the drop on him but there's three players in this box Triz is nearby too across the street McMurray's like you said was six eliminations leading this game what an absolute beast he's blind and second in the limbs is already out this one Nick trying to break through these walls he has made he's made it up through the spray with the drum gun isn't enough no just short of the seventh elimination. That would have been three points there. I'm surprised he didn't swap to the heavy shotgun. I think he was hoping that maybe the drum gun spray would have been enough, but if he's got the heavy shotgun right there, I think Freak's dead ten times over. Potentially, or even to a trap play in that situation. They were in the same box. He owned a wall. There were a lot of options. JP2 from uh, Luminosity Gaming. We've seen him play with uh, Cypher, I believe, before. Critters from C9 and 5. Minigun, minigun, freak, panic building. The minigun shreds if you if, if, if you land some of those hip fires. Now we saw yesterday though the minigun kind of uh, uh, biting back a little bit against players that decided to use it. Uh, multiple engagements in a row, courage where uh, minigun just didn't work out. Look at Chris. In the right hands wants, this, powerful. wants this fight so badly. The one thing freak can do maybe use this heavy shotgun, and Chris gets the elip. Jayomak still alive. If you've never met Jayomak in real life, I'm pretty sure he's eight foot tall. Um, that's real. We'll have to stat check that one, uh, Courage. <laughs> the push from the east side, you have 17 seconds, 28 players left, and after this circle closes is when things start to get chaotic with circle moves. The Chris, we just saw on the feed a second ago, uh, that elimination that we were watching, he's at two. One more versus who he's against right now. That'll give him three, that's a point. This drum gun push, we've seen it a ton of times, and paid off, but watch the trap. Horrify almost oh, gets it off. Oh, 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 and Chris falls down, down below, just barely dodging. It even, he heard it go off, he, right there, the reset. So it, it attempted to do damage, he, just, he dodged his way out. He would have survived. He had uh, over 150 HP, but man, those last ditch efforts, uh, they pay off in, in just the right situations. Fast, it's Chris be trying to push his way up. He's gonna chase us down. Look for maybe his own little hut to build into. Doesn't have oh, a lot he's of materials. Going right at it. Yeah, he wants to go for this. I think it's more of a desperation play. Boxing himself literally next door. Trying to, he's going to take ownership of some of these or potentially even knock him down. We'll see here in a sec. He's decided to layer himself up. He knows that Tyler's above him is getting shot from a third party, and there's a number of players around him. So he says, I'm not going to expose myself too much right now. You guys fight it out. I'll wait to see if I can pop out. He only has 90, very little uh, uh, materials left. But Tifu in the feed, you saw there, just got an elimination on Rex. The fight here, Crispy deciding it might be time to make a move relocating relocating trying to build up all these layers as many as you can he's going to push up he's out of materials though yeah. seven wood seven brick oh no and well, an interesting edit the corners there kind of create that little diagonal bridge with the walls but it's enough that you can sneak down the edge a little frantic a little frantic not gonna lie Shivzy goes down, Resume goes down, and Eman also goes down. So now there's the 22 players getting close towards that top 10 threshold. He's, Crispy's right here to kind of keep quiet. You see in yeah. the top right, there's four or five players in the area around them, all kind of building and layering on top of each other just to try and stay safe as the circle is going to get ready listen, to move here. Like, just listen to how much is going on around him. And he's got no materials. He can't do anything. Kayun's third elimination. Go ahead and swap to replay this. Quick little edit on the window. Peekaboo. Window. Takes JP2 out. Tempo. Tempo, I'm assuming, just eliminated Young Prism. You see there on the feed. Perfect. That's two eliminations. <laughs> Look at his reaction. Like, oh, God. <laughs> he's got Max Wood, 200 brick. He's in he's in a decent position because right now you see that this mountain that's next to him, that's natural cover that he can use. He can push up the left side of the map once the circle starts to move. Tifu over here, three eliminations, that's one point. So he's in a better position than it was even last game. I'm gonna say right now, for the big names that we've seen participate, this has been some of the best performances so far, right? Oh yeah. Where like Chap, Nick Merks, Chap, Chap, Tifu all putting up a Tifu, good show. Nick Merks, already tempo, already with points on the board. Sitting in great positions to qualify for tomorrow. 
Again, I, I, I have to stress it, folks. We've had qualifiers all this week. It's to earn positions for tomorrow's $1.5 million grand final. It's a holiday. Tune on in. Tell everyone to be there. If you're live in the venue, you will want to be here to secure a spot here early on tomorrow. Do not miss this live in person. This crowd's going to get nuts. Tifu doing uh, something you said even before. This is a pretty common tactic. Uh, just he, he's very good at, at waiting, pacing his timing. He's going to try and drop them at the, the structure that his opponent was using to push in, but it wasn't enough. Multiple layers on that from these uh, top tier builders. So they can, he still even got in Tifu, who's under, it, it, his opponent's underneath him now. And he's got to wait. The Rock's coming in. A time bounce pad to fly away, try and get yep. out. And this is what we were, we were seeing earlier. Crispy's down at the bottom of, of that catacomb of structure. Chris getting the elimination in the feed there. Uh, Nikiski, I believe is this the is name. This is Tifu and Tenpo. Right on top of each other, literally Teammates. a box away. Not this, though. Not here when it's all solos. Tifu using the bounce pad, trying to soar forward. Thankfully for him, none of those drum gun bullets connect. He's made it to the closest spot to this next zone. Sign of a great player making sure positioning for the next move. Now getting sprayed again. I just realized, Lupo, look at his materials. I mean, this is this, this is bad. Ten builds left. I believe that's why you saw he built up that layer in front of him, but didn't cap the top off. Plus, he started to get shot from above. He kind of waited. He had to, he knew he had to had to time the builds correctly because if he had spent all his material earlier, that means the, the, his opponent shooting from above could have potentially busted through and taken shots on him, maybe even eliminated. Him. You see there, he actually flew early. He made it into the zone, Tifu, but this is where things get crazy. Courage. Everybody's moving at the same time. Four yep. eliminations for Chris here. One more gets him a second point, plus there's 16 left. Six more players go down. That's another point for anybody left remaining. Chris has all these shields. Going to get back up to 100 shields. Still 16 players left. Expect a few to begin to drop here. Fade takes down Jayamok. You see Cryo lost to the storm. Another engagement going down as Crispy's trying to sneak on in. 14 players left. Crispy still has no builds. Tifu who eliminates base soldier, which will maybe give him materials to hold on to as Triz. Yes, he gets 500 wood. That, that's a game-changing elip for Tifu. Remember, folks, in game one, Tifu died to chap when he was one elim and one position away from earning two points. Here, he's earned one point this game and another elim plus two more po uh, two more uh, elims in the total game. Top 10 would get him another. Now we were watching Crispy a second ago. He was sitting on seven and seven for his wood and brick, and he saw he made his way in underneath. He's in the bottom, and he, he hid next to a tree, but opted not to knock it down because the tree, the, the setup inside that little catacomb, the build, the, you know, the builds around it, he's totally covered. He can hide in the bottom of the tree, and players that are sneaking by, he might get the drop on him. He might have an opportunity for another elimination rather than knocking the tree down and coming out with maybe 30 wood. There's three builds that it would get knocked down so fast, it might not matter. Tenpo in a fight with Bum Boy. There's a. Another limb for him, Tifu just trying to position himself, already in that next zone, made it to 11th. This is where he died last time, not the case here, Tenpo gets another! Everybody that's left alive right now does get plus one point. They're all top 10. Chris coming away with a double in the, sh the shotgun, eliminations of the feet. Crispy then follows up and takes Chris out with an SMG. And Tifu trying to establish himself up top, somewhere safe. He's six remaining, four eliminations. Ooh. He needs one more for another point. He wants those mat. He wants that that loot so bad. Right, he better. He's got four, 15 builds left total. And he's going to start to use them to try and get up top, opting out of going after those. But the, the Rockets coming in saying, nope, you got to go mess. back down. Now's the time to try and make a, 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 a positional decision. He's got to go down. That's what exactly what he's going to do. Doesn't want to take too much fall damage. He's going to push Ooh. in the zone. He's in the bottom fighting. Now Tifu gets another one. That's five Elims. Makes it There's to top three. Two falling. left. All the loot's falling to Tifu. He's trying to drop on down. Can he drop his opponent in time? Tifu spraying out the build. Here he goes. Are you kidding Tifu me? Dramatics in the final moments there. Tifu, a heartbreaking game one, gave him the fuel to turn up there in game two. He's dropping. You see TNT Rain trying to get the shot off on the way in. Uh, an incredibly long drop, two eliminations for him. He did make it to second. That's two points still, which is, I mean, that potentially puts him in placement for Monday. Yeah. Right. And but Tifa, what a what a game. He's feeling very good after that. You love it to see the emotions there, the pop off. He doesn't have a.